our section, section 8-9, which is called the formation of halo hydrons. This reaction is really similar to the addition of halogen reaction that we just did in section 8.8. It uses an X2 halogen in water and it gives you not a vicinal dihalide but it puts a halogen on one carbon and it puts a hydroxide on the other. So it's an anti-addition the mechanism is the same or very similar to the mechanism in section 8.8, which is why they end up anti. Uh, it starts the same where you attack the X2 with the double bond and you produce that triangle-shaped intermediate. And then in the second step, instead of being attacked by a bromide ion or an X- minus ion, you get attacked by a water molecule instead. Um, this carbon right here in the product is the most substituted carbon. It's said to be a Markovnikov addition, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you know the Markovnikov rule in terms of hydrogen. Uh, so the OH group ends up going on the most substituted carbon just like a Markovnikov uh, reaction to produce an alcohol would. Let's go straight to some examples for this reaction, uh, starting with a, a mechanism as well. So we are going to take this alkene and we're going to react it first with a Cl2 molecule. We're going to use the alkenes, pi electrons, attack the chlorine, uh, break the chlorine-chlorine bond to produce a chloride. We get this intermediate, which looks like that, and that gets attacked with a water molecule. The water molecules is going to be Markovnikov-ish. So the water molecule is going to go on to the most substituted carbon, which in this case is this guy right there. The water molecule goes there and it breaks that. Uh, that's a really messy arrow. That carbon-chlorine bond right there. So you end up with that guy. I remember that these things are going on anti. We want to throw some stereochemistry in this so that we don't forget it. Let's go ahead and make the water molecule onto a, a dash bond. The chlorine will go onto a wedge. The methyl group has to be on a wedge as well if the water molecule is on a dash. All we need to do is deprotonate the water molecule, which we can do with another water molecule. Pop off one of the hydrogens. The oxygen-hydrogen bonding electrons will just turn into a lone pair. And we end up with this particular molecule. And it's going to have an isomer uh, where the Cl is on the wedge, excuse me, the dash. The OH is a wedge. The CH3 is a dash. So drawing that out, we'll just say and the enantiomer is also made as well. Let's do another example. Two butene reacting with Cl2 in water. Quick and dirty. We've got methyl groups on the same side, cis. So we're going to put both of those as wedges. We've got hydrogens going in the back, dashes. We're going to put a chlorine going down and a hydroxide going up. And we 
could also have things going the different way. Where we put the chlorine down, we could have put it up instead. If we took some time to think about it in our head, we could probably predict in our mind whether or not these two molecules were the same or if they were isomers of each other. Sometimes it's faster to just draw in bulk and assign stereochemistry. This is one, two, three. That's an S. And over here, one, two, three, that's an R. So these are going to be two different molecules. Let's do another one. Sometimes when you're adding Br2, instead of using water, we use aqueous sodium chloride. Still gives us the same kind of products in the end. A methyl group, which we're just going to default to a wedge position, put the OH as the dash, and the bromine that we've added as the wedge. And we're going to produce the enantiomer of that. When we're reacting with aqueous sodium chloride present, we can also, instead of having, back up here in the mechanism, instead of having a water molecule opening up this uh, intermediate, we could have this being done by a chloride ion. Ooh, that guy right there. So instead of having an OH group in this spot, a Cl- could show up in that spot. This would be useful if that's what you're trying to make. And we're going to have an enantiomer of that as well. Okay, so two practice problems for this section. Let's take this alkene. and convert it into this product. We just learned how to take an alkene and add a chlorine and a hydroxide group to it right there. So the reagents that we're going to use for this are Cl2 in water. Here is an example that's a little bit trickier and our last example. We're going to take this alcohol and at first glance it looks like we're just going to put a chlorine on there. Now we do not have the knowledge or the ability to take a hydrogen and pop it off and replace it with a chlorine. So we're going to ask ourselves or tell it, realize to ourselves this is going to be a multi-step process. Even though it looks like we should be able to do it just in one step, we can't. So we want to ask ourselves, do we know how to make this molecule? Yeah, we just learned if there was an alkene right here, we could put the OH group and the Cl group on the molecule. So if it was this with an alkene right there, we could produce that. And then we want to ask ourselves, can we turn this into an alkene? Yeah, it's just an acid catalyzed dehydration. It's just a basic dehydration reaction. So what we're going to do start with our alcohol. We're going to use a little bit of sulfuric acid and produce an alkene. Following St. Seth's rules, the most substituted alkene will be produced. And then we are going to react it with Cl2 in water. That's going to put the OH group onto the most uh, substituted carbon, which is that one right there, and that's exactly where we want it to go. And there's our product. That's the end of this section. I want you guys to write some study questions or write a study question for this section. I don't think you need to write a summary for this section.